behalf of Nigerian teachers, I want to um, thank Universal Basic Education very sincerely for uh, getting involved in this conversation and sending uh, a, a, a top member of the management team to come and join us to um, you know, start a conversation that will lead us to a very glorious place. So on that note, um, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Mr. Aleshi, who is the Director of Teacher Development at Universal Basic Education Commission, to come and take over the microphone. So in the next 40 minutes, we're listening to him, taking our notes, and preparing to ask him some questions. Yeah, it's my great pleasure to be here. My name, like uh, uh, the convener said, my name is Alesh Nyolumayowa, and I'm the Director of Teacher Development at the Universal Basic Education Commission in Abuja. I'll be speaking on uh, what basic education means and how we can deliver it well. Um, my focus is going to be on what happens in Nigeria, what it means to us here, and how specifically the Basic Education Commission has uh, been dispensing or managing uh, uh, basic education in Nigeria and the role of uh, the state basic education boards and the local government education authorities. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, education plays a significant role in creating a better future for any nation in that it equips individuals for meaningful contributions to social, economic and political development. We know that if there's going to be any development, if there's going to be any progress in any country, in any nation, it's very, very important to put education uh, uh, a priority. So any nation that wants to remain globally competitive must place premium importance on uh, and huge investment in the education of its citizenry. I earlier said that. And the 1999 Constitution, um, as amended, provides equal and adequate educational opportunities to all levels to promote science and technology and to eradicate illiteracy by working toward free, compulsory and universal primary education, free secondary education, free university education, and free adult literacy program. This is uh, what the uh, Constitution, 1999 Constitution as amended, has provided. But there's also a clause there that uh, uh, if the country is able to do that, when the country is able to do it, it can, it, it's allowed to do. So uh, uh, presently what we have now is free, compulsory, and universal primary education. We've not been able to get to the area of giving free secondary education or free university education. Also, Section 15 of the Act says every child has a right to free, compulsory, and universal basic education, and it shall be the duty of the government in Nigeria to provide such education. That's why uh, the federal government, uh, in collaboration with the state government, uh, that's why uh, the universal basic education program uh, was instituted. Um, in realizing the role education plays in sustainable global development, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, championed the World Declarations on Education for All. And this was adopted in Jomtien, in uh, Thailand, 1990, New Delhi in 1991, Dakar, Senegal in 2000, and the follow-up conference in Beijing with the aim to meet the learning needs of all children, youth, adults by 2015. And that was when we had the Millennium Development Goals of uh, 2015. That was the focus. The pre-2015 EFA declaration have now been transformed into education goals for 2030. That's the Sustainable Development Goals. And a new vision for education adopted at 2015 World Education Forum, organized by UNESCO, UNICEF, World Bank, and all that. So the Sustainable Development Goal, uh, the focus now, because we've moved beyond the 2015. And with that, from the MDGs, in, with the EFAs, the federal government introduced the NIA Universal Basic Education Program in 1999 as a response to the attainment of education for all. 
uh, EFA and the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, and uh, the UB Act, Universal Basic Education, Universal Basic, Basic Education Act, was enacted in 2004. And the Act gives a level, legal backing for the provision of free compulsory basic education to every Nigerian child. Next slide. Although the responsibility of providing free and compulsory basic education is vested in the states and local government, the federal government is intervening through allocation of a 2% consolidated revenue fund. According to the Constitution, the uh, sole responsibility of providing basic education uh, lies with the states, state government and the local government, uh, the local government. But the federal government is intervening presently uh, to support what the states and the local governments are doing or what they're providing uh, uh, for, for basic education. We also have other sources of funding recognized by the acts. So we have guaranteed credits and local and international donors. So that's why we have grants from the World Bank or you have a do donation from international uh, development partners such as UNICEF um, um, uh, helping us in uh, improving basic education in Nigeria. Um, and to manage basic education in Nigeria, uh, uh, the federal government through the acts also established the Universal Basic Education Commission. So the Universal Basic Education Commission has a supervisory role, a regulatory role also in basic education. So when we look at this, the commission uh, promotes equitable access to qualitative and functional basic education to every Nigerian child uh, for a period of nine years, spanning from early childhood care, the ECCD, six years primary education to junior secondary school. So if you look at in Nigeria, what we could say basic education is, basic education has a scope, and the scope is the early childhood care, development and education, and uh, the six year primary education, and the three years junior secondary school. In fact, we can even say it's not nine years anymore, we can say it's 10 years, because we have the one, it's now one, according to the National Policy on Education, it's not 6334 anymore, it's 16334. Why is the one introduced? The one aspect is the early childhood care. We know the early childhood care is from uh, three to five years, but what government is funding, according to the policy of education, is the kindergarten class. That's the five, uh, 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 the five year old. That's why we have one, six, three, three, four. So basic education in Nigeria, the scope of basic education in Nigeria is the early childhood, the primary education, and the junior secondary education. Um, and in the, the basic, it's, um, you can also have the promotion of adult literacy, non-formal education, skills acquisition program, education of special groups such as nomads, migrants, girl, child, and women, Almajeri out of school children and disabled children. This is part of what we have in basic education program in Nigeria. Next. When we look at uh, the scope, the scope of what we have in basic education, the objectives are, uh, um, uh, of the program and the supervisory role of the commission is stated here. Um, the commission develops in the citizenry strong consciousness for education and strong commitment to its vigorous promotion. So we embark on a lot of sensitization and that is also done in collaboration with the state uh, universal basic education boards and the local government education authorities. So we reach out to the communities, reach out to parents, let them know the importance of uh, basic education and why they need to take their children to school. We also provide free universal basic education for every Nigerian child of school going age. It is expected that our primary schools uh, and junior secondary schools are not to pay any fee. It is, it is uh, it's against the law 
for our children in the basic education sector to, pro to pay levy or to pay fees. We also, from the com uh, our objective is to reduce drastically the incidence of dropout from the former school system through improved relevance, quality, and efficiency uh, uh, education. So we, we ensure that once a child is in school, they, uh, uh, a child learns, and we can also give some skills that will make such a child to have some lifelong learning after leaving uh, basic education. We're to cater for the learning needs of young persons who, for one reason or another, have had to interrupt their schooling through appropriate forms of complementary approaches to the provision and promotion of basic education. And this is even the core or aspect of basic education, to ensure the acquisition of appropriate levels of literacy, numeracy, manipulative, communicative, and life skills, as well as the ethical, moral, and civic values needed for laying a solid foundation for lifelong learning. So we have talked about what basic education is in Nigeria, but what does basic education also focus? The focus of basic education is what we have identified as part of the objective of, uh, please, let's go back to the last slide, the former slide, before we move to this, saying that the focus is uh, at the basic education level, the child is expected to uh, acquire appropriate level of literacy, the foundational uh, skills of literacy, of numeracy, and how to do man ma uh, manipulative skills, communicative and life skills, uh, what's expected of the child to acquire when we're talking of uh, uh, basic education, that's from early childhood to junior secondary school. So from the UB Act, what there are services to be provided at the basic education level in Nigeria? And uh, we have the free compulsory basic education uh, uh, to school going age, children from age zero to nine years. That's, we have the ECCD primary, which I explained earlier. There's provision of books and other instructional materials. It's expected that government provides instructional materials and books to learners at this level of education. Provision of classrooms. I'm sure if, especially in Lagos State, if uh, you, you're, uh, you're in the public schools, you'll have seen uh, different uh, buildings provided uh, using the Universal Basic Education Funds. And then we also provide furniture and we we'll provide uh, lunch, the school feeding. So um, I'm also using this opportunity to uh, show to us, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that the federal government supports the provision of basic education with its 2% consolidated revenue fund. The 2% consolidated revenue fund is also disbursed to states. I mentioned earlier that the primary mandate lies with the states and the local government. But the federal government in its wisdom is trying to support what the states are doing with its own funds. And in, this, in such support, the disbursement of the fund is, uh, the, the formula for disbursement is posted on the board. We have the matching grant to states. What we call matching grant is such that once government is providing such an amount to the states, states are also expected to match that amount. So if government is providing 10,000 10, naira, for instance, the state is expected to also provide 10,000 naira. And that means the state has 20,000 naira eventually for the provision of, uh, and matching grants is used for the provision of infrastructure, such as classroom building, renovation, borehole, toilets, play equipment, and all that. And then we have educational imbalance fund. This is to correct uh, imbalances within the states or within local government. So such fund is disbursed to states. So where you find out that um, maybe in the communities, there are uh, needs 
um, peculiar needs in communities. Some communities, they are hard to reach. And such a community might need maybe culverts or um, bridges or something that will make the children learn. So this one is uh, ad administered so that it can correct whatever imbalance we have in a community or in a state. And we also have good performance. The federal government designed this to encourage states. We know states have different, just like we said, we should not talk about uh, some teachers being lazy or being inactive. So once a state is doing well, we seem to be performing well, we also need to give them something to improve as an incentive. So this is what we call good performance, 5% of the fund. And then the special needs education fund is to cater for children with special needs. And we solely assigned 15% uh, 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 of the fund for the provision of instructional materials. We said earlier that one of the services is to provide instructional materials. And uh, we are all here. This is a teacher's conference. It's very, very important. We have talked about continuous professional development, and the federal government has also seen it as very, very important, and that's why uh, this percentage, 10% of this fund, so for instance, if we have 100 million, 10% of 100 million is dedicated for teacher professional development, for continuous professional, is for the development of teachers, building their capacity, so that's what part of it. We have 2% implementation fund and 2% monitoring fund. The implementation fund is to take care of personnel in the system uh, for overhead, while the monitoring fund is for um, uh, quality assurance to see whether we are actually being, uh, we are utilizing this fund appropriately. So uh, that's the structure of uh, 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 the sharing formula for basic education uh, 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 regulation in Nigeria. Next slide, please. So, if we actually, um, whether at the state level, whether at the uh, local government level, I want us to bear in mind that the federal government is only playing a supervisory role and a regulatory role. It is not the federal government that is delivering or implementing basic education programs in Nigeria. It is the states and the local government that are implementers. They are the direct implementers. But if we're actually going to do it well, what are the things that we need to have at our fingertips? Funding, I'm sure while teachers were here, people that line up uh, points for effective delivery uh, uh, in the classroom, some of them mentioned funding, and it's very, very important. So funding is uh, uh, it, it's, it's fundamental because there are a lot of things that you need to do with money. So uh, at the state level, at the local government level, we need to improve uh, whatever amount of funds that we are pumping into education or basic education. Capacity building is fundamental also. We don't leave teachers in the system to become obsolete or fossilized over a period of time. And that's what we do at the national level. We ensure that some fund is provided and this um, uh, is used to improve the uh, skills of teachers to build their capacity. And access to quality basic education should be strengthened. So if we're going to uh, improve basic education delivery in Nigeria, we need to improve access. Because there are a lot of people in the communities, in hard to reach areas, that do not have access. So we need to provide, uh, we need to open access through uh, uh, establishing more schools, building more classrooms. And then the quality assurance is very, very important. Ensure continuous quality assurance for improved basic education. You know, um, like children, or Everybody wants to be, uh, to just behave anyhow. But once there are rules and regulations, and people monitor those rules and regulations, people will fall in line and do the right thing. So if you even put a teacher, or there's a school, and there's no quality assurance at the end of the day, 
you wouldn't even know what's going on there. So it's very, very important to uh, establish a, a quality assurance system or strategy. And so the monitoring strategy is also very important to ascertain compliance with UB implementation guidelines. There is need to conduct periodic monitoring and supervision of UB programs in states and LGEs. These are uh, against the quality assurance of what goes on in the classroom. And then application of ICTs. We, we know that uh, the world um, is it's going technology. So we need to bring ICT into the classroom so that um, uh, I overheard talking about robotics, uh, what happened yesterday. So whatever we make the children or, uh, in the basic education to be at par with their colleagues or their counterparts globally, we also need to do that. And one of, that is, uh, one of those things is application of ICTs in the classroom to enhance teaching and learning. Um, for us at the Universal Basic Education Commission at the national level, I just want also to see, also see what we have done in, from, from the points that I highlighted earlier. For, for us to widen access, we have provide, provided infrastructure, we sensitized and mobilized community. We, there's what we call, um, I know there are a lot of teachers that are from the uh, um, private schools. We have private providers here. But my concentration is basically on public schools because it's a federal government thing where uh, uh, we deal with uh, uh, um, public schools. So we have what we call SBMC, SIP program, the school-based uh, uh, management committee, school improvement program for us. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, educational, in imbalance, uh, educational imbalance, imbalance funds. This is one area where we administer this fund. The SBMC, the school-based management committees, in all primary schools in Nigeria, we have, and even in junior secondary school, we have the school-based management committees. And this is bringing um, the administration and monitoring of schools down to the grassroots to the uh, communities. So we have community, uh, uh, people living in the communities to also monitor what goes on in the school, to also manage, what's, uh, manage the school. So the SIP program is school improvement program. These community members, they know the needs of the school, so they are brought together at a point to design what the program, what the needs of the school, what they have observed the schools need, needed. They don't draw a plan for it, and we fund these such programs so that the school can, can improve. We have special needs and second chance education. Uh, we have a lot of dropouts, so we are creating programs as second chance. So maybe uh, uh, teenage pregnancy had made some people to drop out. What are the other programs that we can uh, create for them? So this is what we're doing at the national level. In reducing the impact of emergency and crisis, especially in the north, northeast of, uh, I don't even want to say northeast now, there are so many areas where we have emergencies now. We have been training teachers on how to manage children a, we are giving them psychosocial support skills and how to manage children in emergencies. So we were able to train 1,300 teachers. We take them as master trainers, and this is expected to be cascaded down to other teachers where, where we have emergencies. For quality provision, we provided instructional materials and enhance the quality of teaching and learning experience through the creation and furnishing of e-learning centers. We I talked about introduction of ICT, so we've uh, been provided um, uh, three centers in the 109 uh, central districts in the nation. So in each of these centers, we have computer uh, uh, um, provided, desktop computers provided, and teachers are also trained on how to use this in the classroom. Um, we have trained from 2013 to 2016 one million four hundred and thirteen four hundred and fifteen teachers. So, uh, teachers in the system have gone through continuous professional development, and this is the number that we have uh, for now. Next slide. So, in, in continuation of that, we also conduct quality assurance 
In, we, we have a quality assurance department that also works with quality assurance department at the State Universal Basic Education Board, and they visit schools, they, self, they do conduct self-assessment. This is very, very important. If we're going to have an effective school, we need to do this quality assurance regularly. I know in private schools, uh, uh, we have uh, um, personnel carrying out that in schools. We have also introduced um, um, sector and strategic plans for basic education so that we don't just do things haphazardly. We, we needed to have plans and then set key performance indicators on how to achieve such. We carry out personnel audits. I'm sure the last one that was carried out was in 2018. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm certain that uh, some teachers here from the private school, in 2018, some of our staff visited your schools, gave you some forms where you um, uh, gave your profile and um, um, you talked about the enrollment of the school and all that. So that was carried out in 2018, but there's a plan to carry out another one this year, which will commence maybe by May or June. And national learning achievements in basic education. This is to a, 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 a um, monitoring learning achievements. So we, it is to also quality assure schools to see what's, what's the level, if a child is in primary four, what are the competencies that is expected of the child, and is he or she being able to uh, meet those standards. That's what the National Learning Achievement is about. And the federal government has also introduced uh, the Federal Teachers Scheme. This is a scheme to improve the quality of teachers. Uh, we, one of the points mentioned here is prevalence of unqualified teachers. So you have unqualified teachers. Also, we have unqualified teachers in private schools and in public schools, especially even the private schools where we don't take the NC teachers. Maybe uh, you just need a teacher, you just bring in a school staff who is very good in delivery. Such a teacher, such a person is still not a teacher. It's uh, unqualified because the national policy on education stipulates that any uh, body that's going to be in the classroom must have the minimum requirement of national certificate in education. So um, we, are, we introduced the Federal Teacher Scheme to uh, beef up the number of qualified teachers in the system. And we have also been able to build the capacity of education secretaries. It's very, very important if we, because one of the things mentioned here is leadership. And if you're going to have effective delivery in schools, we also need to put priority on leadership. Leadership, head teachers, managers, uh, policy makers, they also need to build their uh, capacity. When uh, the convener was talking, about, uh, talking earlier, he uh, mentioned the way we tag people lazy, inactive, and all that. If you already have uh, uh, um, knowledge of how to relate with people, emotional intelligence um, skills, one will not be calling uh, uh, or tagging a teacher as lazy or inactive. So that's why it's very, very important. And that's what, one thing we have also put in priority at the Basic Education Commission. Uh, giving capacity building to education secretaries because they are in charge of primary uh, basic education. Um, this is what we've been able to do uh, over time in providing access. So the new classrooms, renovated uh, classrooms, provision of toilets, boreholes, and all that. Let's move on. So for equity, uh, we, have op we will have open schooling initiative, which includes the creation of community learning centers. We've concentrated uh, our program in the southeast to reduce dropouts. We have the boy child education. And then in the north northern part of the country, where we have the challenge of the girl child, we have also introduced programs on girl child education. And, uh, We've also been investing in uh, education 
of the uh, Almajiri, the integrated Quranic and Sangaya education. Uh, this is basically in the, uh, the northern part of the country and some states in the south where we have this uh, uh, prevalence of Almajiri uh, uh, on the streets. And there's basic education service delivery for all. This is um, a grant that we are implementing with the World Bank to ensure that ch children are off the street and they're in the classroom. Um, I mentioned that to deliver education properly, we need to introduce ICT, and we are laying this uh, uh, foundation. We are doing pilot. We are establishing smart model schools. One is there is one smart model school in Lagos State. Um, um, when, when, when we say smart, it's going to totally be smart. Uh, the teachers are going to over train. It's going to be purely the use of ICT. So that's why we take it as a modern smart school. Provision of ICT infrastructure in schools, introduction of e-learning center in centurial zones, establishment of data resource center, and we're also initiating an online learning platform for teacher professional development. When the person that this, um, forgotten the name, the person from UK spoke, it said 109, it's very important for teachers to also develop themselves. There should be self-development. We have also, apart from the fact that we are carrying out face-to-face -face training, we are trying to initiate this online professional plat online platform for teacher professional development, which will be open to everybody, whether you're a private school teacher, whether you're a public school teacher. You, we are trying to connect it with Teacher Registration Council of Nigeria. Because uh, as a professional teacher, a licensed teacher with TRCN, you need to have some accreditation and you need to have some credit to yourself. So uh, uh, having gone through some uh, professional development, there are credits you need to have to yourself to renew your license. So we are opening this platform. Once it's uh, fully developed, anybody that find who, who, who wants to register with TRCN or who has already registered but wants to improve himself can also connect to this platform at the end of the day uh, run some courses or programs and then earn units and credit to him, him or herself and then use it to uh, uh, do re-licensing or re-registration with Teacher Registration Council. And then we're also introducing digital, we are introducing our teachers to digital pedagogy. We found out that during the COVID-19, it's only uh, many, it's only learners in the private school that had the opportunity of have, having education or, or, or um, studies going on. So we wouldn't want this to happen. Nobody is saying that there's going to be another COVID, maybe COVID-20 or COVID whatever, but we need to get our learners ready. Let's start, please. So we have challenges affecting the implementation of basic education in Nigeria. And um, when we were taking points, some people also mentioned the issue of insecurity. Insecurity in some states uh, slows down school construction, slows down um, completed projects, and teachers seem to they run away uh, from, from places where there are challenges of insecurity. So that this one uh, problem that we have now, and then the space of insecurity of states leading to increase in out of school children. We are putting in place different programs to reduce the out of school children, but because of uh, the insecurity that, uh, challenges that we have, it tends to reduce, uh, um, increase the number of out of school children in, in the country. Um, the slow drawdown of the federal government UB matching grants by states. As of, um, I don't know, have up to date now, but we have about uh, 43 billion naira still unaccessed. And uh, this, this is a grant. Federal government is giving you money. Access this grant and then use it to build your school, use it to provide water, provide toilet, improve situation in school. But uh, political will, lack of political will on the part of, of, of state government has uh, made them not to access this fund. 
unwillingness of states to replicate the efforts of the federal government. There are so many programs that federal government is uh, instituting. But because we said, according to the Constitution, the delivery of basic education is in the hands of the states and local government. But unwillingness on their part is not making them to uh, uh, replicate these programs. In ability of some states to demonstrate willpower in the provision of adequate budget for running of UB program. Apart from, we have found that, that apart from what the federal government is providing, states are, many states are not providing anything. They have left it once, it is only what they collect from the federal government that they use. So that's why we have a lot of challenges. So vandalization of schools, uh, um, um, uh, schools, uh, schools and thefts of school facilities and equipment. I wouldn't know whether it happens in Lagos, but I'm, I'm damn sure that it happens in Lagos. I've been to a school in, in, in Edo State. You get there, these people sleep in the ceiling. They come in the morning, you see they are defiscated uh, uh, they, in, in school. They have destroyed so many things. So this is part of the challenges that we have. Politicization of basic education and its management. Weak school governance, inadequate attention paid to basic education sector plan, existing gap in the UB mandate to include activities of private providers of basic education, thereby inhibiting data. During the 2018, while well, we were collecting data, we had so many gates of private schools shut to us. And once we are talking about data, data does not also limit. It's not limited to public schools. It's supposed to be with public and private schools. So if we're talking about out of school children in Nigeria, once we have data of private and public, we can aggregate everything and be able to give accurate data. Lack of statutory financial provision for policy planning and research and developing activities in suburbs. Nonchalant attitude by the community towards government-owned schools. Ineffective monitoring mechanism at state and local government levels to identify high and low performance, and the digital divide in accessing technologies for education. This is very, very, uh, uh, it's a big problem. During the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, there were trainings to be carried out for teachers. For instance, in Oshun State, the training was for like 1,000 teachers. But because of the digital divide, it's only 300 teachers that could link up to uh, the training. And even the 300, the network was fluctuating. So there's a big problem in that area also. So we um, also tried to provide some solutions, say uh, develop data collection system with a focus on disaggregated statistics to identify marginalized groups and monitor their progress. If we have accurate data, it will help us to deliver basic education uh, uh, effectively in Nigeria. Then we'll be able to say where we are, what we still need to do, and uh, the other programs we need to also put in place. Increase resource mobilization and strengthen equity in public spending. Effective involvement of local government administration by states in the implementation of basic education program. This is very fundamental. Basic education, especially when we talk about the primary education, is in the ambit of the local government. So, but we have seen, because so many problems in Nigeria, uh, the mandate of the states is left in the hand of the federal. What the local government is supposed to be doing, states is hijacking it. So, we have so many discrepancies, and that's why we are not having uh, effective delivery of basic education in Nigeria. Sensitization of communities to consider government schools as their own, give them adequate protection, and improve their participation in school management and administration. We have given um, uh, um, an example of that. We are piloting it with our SBMC, SIP, which I believe the state is also implementing. So we need to bring the communities even to the management of schools. And this will help us in proper management of uh, in proper, uh, an appropriate delivery of basic education in Nigeria. The prioritization of politics in UB program. Um, uh, this is also uh, very, very important. 
we have found out that even in some places where you are doing recruitment, instead of bringing in qualified teachers, it is people who, who uh, they are using it to pat um, patronize po political parties. So they just bring in their party people, and then it's going to affect the delivery at the end of the day. Improvement in school supervision and quality control. Government at all levels must consider basic education as a right and necessity for the Nigerian child, regardless of, of social class, ethnicity, and religion. This is where, if we all accept this, if um, people in government accept, accept this, they will put priority, place more premium on the provision of quality education. Closing the wide gap between the urban and the rural areas in accessing technology for education. I, I mentioned that earlier. I also wanted to also know the roles of states and the LGAs in the delivery of basic education. Um, states are expected to formulate policy guidelines for successful operation of the universal basic education program. For instance, like when we're talking about uh, taking points here, some people say there are different curriculum. We have curriculum from private um, um, school providers, some are running British curriculum, some are running state's curriculum, some are running uh, the national curriculum. That's not supposed to be the situation. If the states actually are, are fulfilling their roles of formulating policy guidelines, then we'll be able to deliver basic education effectively. It is the states that are supposed to come up in line with the national curriculum to draw up uh, 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 the curriculum that will be used in the, uh, in the schools, even in private schools. They're supposed to follow what the uh, state has drawn up. They're supposed to, they are expected to receive these grants that the federal government gives to implement basic education, administer and disburse the funds, prescribe minimum standards for basic education, manage public primary and junior secondary schools, recruit, appoint, promote and discipline teaching and non-teaching staff on grade level seven and above. Um, while the local government, because they are supposed to work together, local government is the third tier of government in the country and they are closer to the grassroots, they are in charge of primary education and they recruit teachers from grade level six down, payment of primary school teachers and salaries, provision of maintenance of educational facilities, provision of vocational education and skill acquisition centers, mobilization and sensitization of the grassroots, and monitoring and supervision of primary schools. These are the roles of the local government education authority. But are they fulfilling these roles? If we are actually going to deliver effectively, then states need to stand up to their responsibilities and local government also need to stand up to their responsibility. I'm just, I, I want to give us this uh, pictorial view. This is, that's Jubek. Jubek is working at the federal level, and I said our role is to just oversee, to play a regulatory role. Uh, we also devote funds to, uh, for the implementation of basic education. Implementing basic education is not the role of the federal government. It's the role of the state and the local government. So what the federal government does is just to complement, to support states and local governments. And then you have the suburb. Suburbs are the state universal basic education boards. In every, all the states uh, nationwide, we have state universal basic edu education boards. They, they are the ones, it's an agency of the Ministry of Education, and they are the ones in charge of basic education working with the local governments. So, so you have the state and the local government, then the school. We can see the arrow there. The arrow there shows the anomaly that goes on in the system, and that's why, the, uh, 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 that's why basic education is not being effectively delivered, because suburbs at times take over the function of the local government education authority. And when we have this kind of system, there's going to be the, the, the quality uh, assurance and supervision is going to be lacking. Let's, let's move on. So we are recommending the provision of adequate funding for improved basic education services at all levels, at the local government education authority, 
at the state universal education. Even for the federal government, we have found out that the 2% is not even enough. So we are agitating and requesting uh, that the federal government should improve on, on the funding so that we can disburse more to the state's government. Then capacity building of teachers should be prioritized. It's very, very important. A teacher shouldn't be in the system. <coughs> Excuse me. A teacher shouldn't be in the system for three, four years and wouldn't have gone uh, through, uh, through uh, uh, professional development. What we have done at the federal level now is to design a platform so that at least in uh, two, three years, a teacher must have gone through one training or the other. That's what we're doing, and that's what we're selling to the state. Access to basic education should be strengthened to provide educational opportunities to the out-of-school children and educationally disadvantaged. If we're going to meet the sustainable, sustainable development goals by 2030, we need to place premium on this. If by 2013, all school-going day children should be in school, and we should have 100% then we need to uh, open access and give pro programs to out-of-school children and uh, children that are disadvantaged. Improve quality assurance service to enforce quality in basic education services delivery at state and local government le level. Improve monitoring and supervision and application of ICTs to enhance teaching and learning. I want to zero on, on this application of ICT. It's very, very important. I know the private schools are enjoying that. It's not that we are there already, but it's very important for us to improve uh, ICT in the classroom, build the capacity of our teachers to be able to uh, uh, use ICT to deliver, and also for the learners, provide ame uh, amenities, uh, infrastructure that children can learn. Uh, we, we can, somebody spoke to us from, from UK. Uh, before, you have to bring the person here. But now we, can, we have that strategy of doing that. So that's very, very important for us to do in our schools. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us, please, in all honesty, uh, it's saying that we have over 40 billion naira waiting somewhere to be collected by state to bank. 41 billion. 41 million. Billion. 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 Yeah. What is the obstacle? In I just, this, I just highlighted that we are looking for only half a million. We have 41. I just million. highlighted some of the obstacles. I, it's um, um, one, it's unwillingness on the part of, of the states to access the fund, and um, another is the fact that if you had access earlier, you must provide evidence of judicial situation before you access again. So some are having uh, uh, the challenge of providing the evidence of uh, judicial utilization. So if you cannot do that, you can't access the fund. So um, that's, those are some of the problems. Proof of judicial utilization of what we have been given. And unwillingness. Um, on, on the part of the states, um, um, not ready to also provide counterpart funding. For that 41 billion, you must provide counterpart funding. So what we have in the system now is 41 billion. That means states are also expected to provide 41 billion. So we can now use, use 82 billion to pro provide quality basic education. Okay. Well, I want to assume that um, in terms of allocation, all the states don't get a equal amount of money from you. They do, because they, all the states are equal. Really? It's a federal government fund, so uh, all the states are equal. Okay, so if Lagos gets a billion... Uh, uh, and and the gets a billion. Yes. Well, that sounds very interesting to hear. So, uh, effectively speaking, you're saying if, um, if uh, Imo um, is required to provide... If, if you have one billion for Imo, Imo needs to be ready to prove that there's one billion waiting Yes, you have before you can access our own one billion. Where are they supposed to deposit it? They, 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 you must, the state must have created an account. Okay. We, you, I showed 
the I presented the formula. There are funds that are taken as grants. There are funds that are conditional. The conditional fund is when we are having the issue of 41 billion. Okay. There are grants that we give for the provision of instructional materials. We give, we just procure and send to states based on their request. For teacher development, the fund is given to the states to train their teachers. No, no need for counterpart no, funding. No need there. of counterpart funding. Okay. But you still see that some states still are still lagging behind in utilizing the, the fund. In utilizing for, the fund to train teachers? Yes. For special education needs, it's, it's, it's a grant. It's also given to states to provide uh, uh, education for children with special needs. You still see states that are still dragging in the utilization of that. That, that sounds very strange to us. I, I don't understand what we mean by dragging there. They, they are not required to provide. They are not. They are, they are not. Funding. They are not required to provide. So what's, what's stopping them? They are not aware that that fund is there. Of course, every all the states know they are what entitled. What they are entitled to. Okay. But once it's we can't force states to also come to collect the funds. It's when they are ready. You need to provide an action plan okay. on how, uh, uh, how you are going to utilize the fund. Okay. And many states have uh, this uh, capacity gap in doing that. And so if the, it's not submitted, then you may not be able to access. Until you fulfill the, re the requirements you must fulfill, whether it's a grant or it's a conditional uh, fund, okay. there are requirements you must fulfill. It is when you have fulfilled the requirement that you have the opportunity. So, so, so capacity is a big issue in, 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 the, in terms of your relationship with the states as it concerns what you can do for them. Yes. So states that lack the capacity to do the paperwork and uh, put the entire conditions in place are not likely to um, maximize available opportunities that we are providing. No, they are not. No, they are not. Okay, so does it uh, come across as really a big challenge from giving you uh, your know, closeness with, with the system? It's, it's a big challenge because um, Everybody is saying that basic education uh, has a, a, a big problem, that we are not achieving what we're supposed to achieve. And we have funds that we can use to improve the situation, but the, funds, the fund is lying, is lying there, down there. Nobody is utilizing it. So it's a big challenge for us. And it's also one of uh, uh, the uh, measurement of performance of the commission uh, although it's for us, it's just to disburse. People, Nigerians feel Universal Basic Education Commission is not performing, but it is not the commission itself, but the Basic Education Board who are the direct implementers. So it's a very big, it's a big issue for us. Okay. Is there anybody here who feels very um, concerned about anything you want to raise as a question? Only one question. Can you come get, get very close? Can we get the microphone? Just one person. But if there is a lady who also feels very concerned, I would like to see you here. Very quickly. Yeah, ask it by way of PowerPoint. So don't do too much analysis. Don't, this is not the place to start worrying about Boko Haram. Okay. Is there anybody here who feels very uh, concerned about anything you want to raise? And the question, only one question. Can you come get, get very close? Can we get the microphone? Just one person. And thank you, Mr. Alishi. Uh, my own question is this. Uh, what are the national uh, developmental goals of Nigeria uh, education system? Like, um, our goal is it for industrialization, for space science. You are giving him the expo. You have asked the question. Don't you say that. According to according to the national uh, policy on education, according to national policy on education, the uh, where education for us is to create an egalitarian society. It's also to develop the nation technolo technologically. So once we have this basic education, um, like I said, that basic education is where you have um, um, ethical and moral development. 
So one of the goals is to create an egalitarian society, make everybody uh, equal. So that's one of the goals of education. And one of the, the other goal is to also develop Nigeria technologically. So basic education also gives us the access of doing that. I wouldn't know if I've answered your question. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, we know what the answer is. We're not, that's the, the right answer. That's what we want as a society. Um, the fact that we are, we are standing there as um, a key member of the management table of people. What do you think? Are we there, a egalitarian society? <laughs> <laughs> Speak as Mr. Leshi, not as the director. And the press won't quote you on this Well, I'm, I'm a civil servant. <laughs> And I, uh, I, I, I am here as a civil servant. <laughs> okay. Well, I wouldn't even think America is there. And don't worry about America. I'm, 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 just paint, I'm just painting a scenario. Okay. So, because we always use uh, developed world as our yardstick. They are not there, and they started long ago. So for, for Nigeria too, we are not there. We are striving. And that's where different programs are being put in place. Fantastic answer. That's a well-groomed you know. public servant. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Mr. Aglias yes, for the election deliver. Uh, my own question has to do with uh, the... Identify yourself, sir. Okay. I'm Mr. Identify from uh, State Legal State Professor of the Education Board. Um, my own concern is about this meeting because I expect that this meeting is supposed to be a stakeholders meeting. And uh, when we talk about stakeholders meeting, I expect that uh, all the stakeholders are supposed to be here. And uh, here now, we have a lot of private schools uh, in attendance. And this question we are doing about you be here, I want to ask, how will the private schools benefit from you being informed? So I think I want to ask that question. Because here right now we have a lot of uh, stakeholders, uh, I'm sorry, the private school sector in this case. Now. Uh, that's, that's, you have asked your questions, I thank you very much for that. I will answer for the very thing that some of the things you are providing, especially moving to the future, are also going to cater for even um, schools in the private sector. Did I hear it right? For example, a you know, portal for continuous teacher professional development. Is that yes, correct? Yes, Is that yes, correct? Yes, I said that. But the, 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 the purview given to us is what's basic education and how do you deliver it. For us, at the, basic edu as, at the Universal Basic Education Commission, we regulate basic education in Nigeria, and um, we also work with state basic education boards and the LGAs. So we wouldn't go out of the purview of what we're doing, and that's why uh, uh, this presentation focuses on what we do. I think um, the participants, it is not the presenter that is supposed to draw the participants. It's a teacher's conference, and teachers are in the public sector, and they are also in the private sector. So probably, um, I wouldn't know whether the invitation was extended to the public sector, or whether it was only extended to the private sector. So. It's, the person it, I, who spoke I, is from the public sector. So, so, that so it, is, it is open to everybody. Yeah. And I also believe that uh, the presentation is some prioritization and that there are other things that the private sector can also benefit from, from, the, from the lecture. So I believe that, that that's my own answer to that. Uh, All right. Final question to, uh, uh, for gender sensitivity. Um, very quickly. Okay. So I want to ask, are there measures that have been taken in place to make sure that the states are able to provide their own um, forms? All right, thank you very much. That's the question. Well, we cannot force states to do whatever. You can only do sensitization. I want you to know that the federal system of federal, federal system that we run only say that you can encourage states to do this. You cannot force states. For instance, if Lagos State is not providing the funds, what we can only do is to um, carry out an advocacy to tell the governor, these are your rights, these are the things you, uh, you have with us, uh, and you have not accessed it over time, please do. 
We cannot force the state to say you must. That's why the funds are still there. So we carry out mobilization, advocacy to states, and tell them sensitization on what the, 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 their entitlement. But we still wait. Whoever has not accessed it, there's no, nothing to force them to As, as the uh, people in to Plenty Grammar say, you can only force a horse to the river. You can't force it to drink water. Maybe. Thank you very much. OK, so my own concern is um, on the kind of education that Nigeria is focused on. I see the kind of system that is run nationwide as uh, the kind of education that is m focused on certification. So the question is, what's the plan? Because no nation can grow uh, bigger or better than the, the quality of education of the citizens. That's it. Thank you very so much. What, Answer. What's the, what's the plan to move from this uh, certification mentality to a kind of education where children are now innovative? That's OK. She has, she has, she has Thank actually. you very much. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm also. Um, um, representing one of our sisters of the Federal Minister of Education. That will have been an appropriate question for Federal Minister of Education, but I'm here also representing them. So um, it's the curriculum that determines this kind of thing you are talking about. And curriculum is reviewed regularly. I know presently there's even the issue, we already have STEM in, in, in the curriculum, but presently uh, uh, they are tinkering with the idea of uh, bringing, join up another, maybe pushing STEM to priority in our curriculum. So if um, the NERDC, that is the uh, agency in charge of curriculum, um, if they eventually finish this area of STEM, I'm sure the innovation aspect will also come to fore. But curriculum is reviewed maybe every five, five years. And this issue that you are talking about is also on. People are talking about it. The agency also, they, they are aware. And they are also coming up with something that will ensure that STEM or STEAM is also uh, put in, in, in priority in the curriculum. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Les. You have performed excellently well. Um, if uh, not for the fact that we won't pay you as much as the federal government is paying you, I would have hired you to come and you know, become you know, somebody on, Thank on, you. On, on our side. Let's put our hands together for this great Nigerian who has joined us today from Abuja. Thank you very much for, for what you have done. So everybody join us uh, on, the, on the platform. Let's go for group photograph. We do it in, in two minutes and we'll go for our food. Mr. Leshi, you come. Stand in front. Children, we want the children in front. Who made it today? Um, uh, uh, yeah, those of you who came in yesterday, did you look at the sun today? Education is beginning to make front page in Nigeria. We are on the front page of the sun today. Check it out. Yeah, let's put our hands together for Nigeria. <laughs> Nigerian teachers, the whole world is watching and they are happy that we are taking Nigeria's education to a global stage. Whether the politicians like it or not, we must move forward and our education is going to take us there.